Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over one example where we use the kinematic equations to solve for one dimensional horizontal motion. And in this video, the example we're going to go over is we're going to be solving for the displacement or the distance that object travels or the change in position. And this is the problem we're going to work on. We have a commercial passenger airplane which has an acceleration of 3.35 meters per second squared. We want to know what is the minimum length of the runway needed for the airplane to reach its takeoff speed of 83 meters per second. Okay, now in all the problems we've done for kinematic equations, I've always told you the first step that you should do is write down all five of the variables that occur in the kinematic equation. Write down all five. Initial velocity, vi. Final velocity, vf. Change in position, or the distance is delta x. Acceleration and the time. Just write them all down. Now fill in what you know and what you don't know. Now in this case, the initial velocity is zero meters per second. The final velocity is 83 meters per second. We're given the acceleration. We want to find the change in distance, excuse me, the change in position or the distance delta x. We're not given the time and we're not solving for the time. You will notice once again, you've been given three variables. You're trying to solve for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. Each of the kinematic equations has four variables in it. If you know three of them, you should be able to solve for the fourth. I like to start at the top of the list. Look for an equation that has the variable you're trying to solve for, delta x in this case, and it also has to have the other three variables. Then you can solve quite easily for delta x. The first equation has delta x. Do we know the other three variables? Well, we know the initial and the final velocity, but the time, we don't know the time. Therefore, we cannot use that equation. The next equation doesn't even have the change in position delta x, we cannot use that equation. This equation has delta x, but once again it has the time, we don't know the time, so therefore we cannot use that equation. Let's see, hopefully the fourth and final equation will work out. This has delta x, which is what we're solving for. We know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, and we know the acceleration. So therefore, this is our equation. Let's take it with us to the next slide. Now, I like to, before I plug the values in, rearrange the equation and solve for what we're trying to solve for. Rearrange the equation for what we're trying to solve for, in this case, delta x. Now, another thing you should recognize for this equation, which will make things a little easier, is vi, the initial velocity, is zero. That means vi squared is going to be zero, and that means this equation simplifies to that the final velocity squared is equal to 2a delta x. We want to solve for delta x. We're just going to divide both sides by 2a. We get that delta x is equal to the final velocity squared divided by 2a. Now we plug the values in. That's 83 meters per second squared divided by 2 times the acceleration, 3.35 meters per second squared. And we get that the distance the plane has to travel in order to reach its takeoff speed when it has an acceleration of 3.35 meters per second squared is 1,028 meters. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Follow those steps. Write down the five variables. Write down what you're given, what you're trying to solve for. Choose the correct kinematic equation. Rearrange for the variable you're solving for. Plug the values in. Get the answer with the correct units. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can do that. Now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, you can and should do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up. Click on the thumbs up down there in the thumbs up section below. Leave me a nice positive comment. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video.